Hey guys, so I just got back from a Christmas Eve pre-screening of Unbroken. Yeah, they literally had like pre-screenings for the first time on Christmas Eve. For every movie that was um, playing tomorrow, premiering tomorrow, they had a pre-screening at like 7 o'clock. Weirdly enough, when I was leaving the movie theater at like 9.30, uh, usually you know, they have uh, show times for like movies at like 10.30, stuff like that, all the way up to 10.30. No, they were starting to place down at 9.30. Yeah, I thought that's kind of cool. Like, be courteous to the uh, employees there. I thought that was nice. Even though, like, on Christmas Day, they're there till, like, 11, 1 in the morning half the time. I've been there uh, for, like, a like a 11 p.m. showing of, like, Django, and I didn't get out till like, 2 a.m., and there's still out, out. There's people, employees still there, which was kind of funny. Um... That's actually kind of funny. Well, I don't want to get into that story. But anyways, um, yeah, I've been looking forward to this movie a lot. Um, this is one of those movies that I was going out of my way to try to see sometime uh, the uh, next couple of days. Because I was like, I have to see this movie. Because I've been wanting to see it for a long time. Uh, ever since I heard that this movie was being made. Um, and I've talked about it uh, a few times in my reviews when talking about the trailer. I kind of, I, like, back about, probably about back in June, I came across the story of Louis Zamperini um, through a ra local radio host up here in Cleveland. Um, he did an interview with uh, him, and uh, he was, when he was, it was like uh, from a couple of years ago, and he played the, ra the radio interview because uh, he, Louis had died. Um, this past year, and uh, he decided to play that interview, and I was listening to this story, and I'm just like, wow, like, just blown away by this guy's story, like, like, if you haven't, I haven't read the book, but I'm like, I, I, now, I really want to read the book, I've, you know, I've t been told how great this book is, and, like, just the story just is amazing to me, like, what, what the shit this guy went through, it was amazing, and then I heard her making a movie, and I'm like, alright, I got the trailers for this fun thing, and I'm like, this, like, just from the trailers, I could tell this was going to be an intense movie, like, really intense movie that, like, I was all sold on it. Um, I know some people were, like, a little worried about Angelina Jolie directing it, but I wasn't, I was like, I haven't really, I, I know she's directed something else, but I forget, uh, what was it, In Land of, uh, of Honey, or Blood and Honey, or something like that. I never saw it, um, I heard mixed things about it, but I never saw it, so this would be the first thing I've seen her direct. I was kind of interested in seeing whether she could direct or not. Um, and I was like, I, I, I was I was sold on this movie. It, it looked really good. The trailers were effective. Like, it was obviously Oscar bait, yeah, but, like, I knew the story behind it, and I knew that this could be a really good movie if done right. Um, and, like, for a while there, like, it was like, the favorite to win best picture before like reviews popped up and then reviews popped up and they're not been that very good <laughs> um the reviews have been uh, mixed to say the least um i think that might be putting it a little lightly um and i was kind of worried about that i'm like ah, what the fuck I was like this movie not that good um i'll say this you know usually i'm uh, lately i've been kind of agreeing with critics a lot lately uh, I think some people might even argue that I agree with them way too much. This is one of those movies where I don't... I absolutely don't. This movie is really good. I don't see why it's getting as bad as badly received as a lot of critics are, you know, making it out to be. This movie is really good. One of the better movies of the year, honestly. Um, it's a very effective story. It's intense as shit in, in some parts. Uh, it's emotional. Um... And, I, and it's 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 really well acted. It is really well acted, and it's competently directed too. Um, the, like I said, the acting is really good in this movie. Um, the main guy, uh, who was his name? I, I'm forgetting his name here. Jack O'Connell. I've never seen him before in a movie. I, honestly, he's a, has he has a face that I've seen before. Like kind of like does it makes me think I've seen him in something, but I can't put it, put my finger on it. But he was, he was really good in this movie. Um, he, you know, being kind of an unknown, he definitely carried this movie. 
Uh, he when he needed to, uh, you know, have very emotional scenes and like, you know, show his acting skills. He, you know, he was top notch. I give him credit, man. I don't know if it, I would say this is like an Oscar worthy performance. I, I don't think he's even getting considered at all. But he did a good job. I thought he did a good enough job. I mean, it's hard to pull off. Be playing such a heroic guy like Louis Zamperini. Um, I, I, yeah, like, in, you know, being, you know, I, I, I thought he did a good job. I also really liked the, um, what was, I'm trying to find this guy's name here for a minute. Mia, Mia B? Mia B? The guy who played the bird, Watanabe, uh, the, the, commander or whatever of that prison camp. I really liked him in this movie. He really was standout. One of the standouts in this movie. Um, he he played that role to a T because I think he was perfect because he had a, fa he had a face of he had a face that you just wanted to punch. <laughs> uh, and he, he was a scrawny little guy. And the point of this movie is that he was only put in this position because he was a uh, son of a general, I think, or something like that. And he's like this, you know, he, they expect great things of him and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, so that's the only reason he was put in this position. And he's like this scrawny guy that's just taking full advantage of being like this sadistic son of a bitch, man. God damn, like, the shit he puts this guy through, Louis through, is insane. Like, I'm... I'm 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 curious what was fabricated. I haven't looked that up yet. I'm not actually looking at the pictures here. I haven't seen anything yet. What was fabricated? I'm am interested very much in hearing what was fabricated and what wasn't. Um. Because uh, I, I I I'm sure in the next few weeks we're gonna hear uh, what was because it's always kind of fast. That's why I buy the documentary like the DVDs half the time for the movies like this. Because usually they tell the real story, and usually this real story is almost more fascinating than the actual movie. A good point, good example, Argo, Gangster Squad, or two that come to mind. Um, even though I do like Argo. Um, but um, anyways, yeah, I like that, that guy was really good. I thought he was really good, and I thought he was a standout. Um... Jay Court isn't like there's not many like recognizable guys in this people in this movie, other than like Jay Courtney, the guy that uh, was uh, um, 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 was in Die Hard Five. That was the only movie I've seen him in other than this, and he's better in this movie than that movie. <laughs> so like I was like you know like I feel bad for the guy because like every time I see him I'm like fuck that guy. <laughs> But honestly, Die Hard 5 wasn't his fault. It was just really bad. Like, it wasn't entirely his fault. He, I mean, you have to be a really talented guy to be able to pull off of, you know, you can be given shit. You have to try to turn shit into gold. It's not possible. But, and weirdly enough, he's like only in the movie for like 10 minutes because he dies. <laughs> like, he's one of the people that dies on uh, Louis' plane. Yeah, he's the one of the people on Louis' plane that gets shot or gets uh, uh, crashed into the ocean. He's one of the people that doesn't survive. Um, also, uh, the only other person that was recognizable in this movie was the. Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, hold on. Garrett Hedlund, uh, the, the uh, son of Jeff Bridges in. Um, uh, Tr uh, Tron Legacy. Yeah, he was the lead character in Tron Legacy. He's in this movie. Honestly, you would almost not for like recognize him. I, I recognized his voice. I knew he was in this movie, but I was uh, like, I that was the only reason I guessed who recognized who it was. Um, the, like 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 I said, the, I thought two standouts were the Japanese or the. Uh, Japanese commander and uh, the uh, guy who played Louis. Um, I thought they both stole. I thought they both were really good and really solid. Um, and it's, this movie is intense as shit. Um, it is PG thirteen, but it 
it pushes its boundaries on PG-13 pretty good. I, I would say that. Like, if you're worried like I was, like, it being PG-13, um, it does push it a little bit. Um, there's some intense scenes. Like, it's not more... It's not really violent. It's more just fucking intense. <laughs> it's, it's like, it is. It's really intense. Um, scenes that I thought were really good. Um... Three that come to mind. Uh, the scene, actually, I thought the most effective scenes actually were when they were in the raft, and like where they're being surrounded by sharks and the Japanese planes shooting at them while they're on the raft. Those scenes are really good. I thought those, I thought the, probably the best. Those are probably some of the best scenes in the whole movie. Um, they were really intense. They were the like the tension in that those scenes were was great. Like the build up like everything it was just well done and then um of course that scene where i'm sure a lot of people point this one out that scene where um he uh louis basically uh i've been told that this is true this did really happen i don't know what was again i don't know all, i know bits and pieces of like what was fabric like what was true um, like the lot, pretty much the whole raft scenes were all pretty much spot on from what Louis, from the interview I re heard him in, he described a lot of that stuff. Um, he, uh, he is asked by the Japanese government to basically denounce America via radio and he refuses to do it and they tells him, they tell him that if he does this, They'll, like, he won't go into imprisonment camp. He can live in Tokyo as a free man. And he can enjoy the high life. They show, like, Americans actually have a down-to-house American, America. And, like, are living in Tokyo and living a really good life. But he refuses to do that, so he ends up back in the imprisonment camp. And he, of course, gets brutally tortured. The way that he gets tortured is that... He, uh, the commander basically has every prisoner on the, in this imprisonment camp take turns and punch him right in the fucking face as hard as they can. And this guy's as bloody as shit, like, by the end of it. It's brutal. Like, it's like over a, I could probably say like almost a hundred people in that fucking imprisonment camp. It's brutal. Um, it's, it's a really tough scene. Like, it's, I was sitting there just like sitting there like, like, I'm, I'm just sitting, like, at the edge of the seat in front of me, like, watching this, like, fuck me. Like, there's points in this movie, I'm sitting there, like, fuck me. <laughs> like, and th the other one that made me kind of do that was the scene that you've probably seen in the poster where he's lifting that board, that big giant board. It's, like, on the, it's the poster of the movie. And it's supposed to be, like, the most, it is, it's a really intense scene. What makes it more intense is that he has a fucking broken leg. There's like a bone sticking out, so he has to stand, and they tell him if he drops it, fucking, they shoot him. So, he, he that scene's great. That, I'm, that's one of those scenes where I kind of did go, I don't know how entirely accurate that scene is. I don't know whether or not, like, how much, it, I guarantee a lot of that was fabricated, because, like, one point you just I'm going to kind of get into spoilers now but uh, he looks the guy in the eye and or the Japanese commander in the eye and like he like the Japanese commander is actually starting to get emotional I don't know how accurate that is I don't know um uh like even like like the Japanese commanders like hinted that he's starting to sh see uh, show sympathy for the guy I, again, I don't know how accurate that is, um, but I, I, again, I, like, there was a couple, like I said, there was a couple things here and there, I was like, towards the end, there was a lot of parts I'm like, I don't know if that really happened, <laughs> like, I wonder if that, like, I wonder, I guarantee you a lot of that stuff probably didn't happen that way, they just fabricated it for the movie, um, like, uh, although, uh, yeah, I, anyways, I'm not, I don't, don't want to try to spoil it, spoil it too much, but anyways, like, the only thing that actually got me through the movie is the fact that I know that he does, like, survive all this, because he did, he, he died this year, like, 88 years old, he's lived a long life, he lived a really long, fuck, 
hear cracking noises on my phone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know if anybody hears that. Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I fucking driving home and fucking, there's a fucking tornado fucking going, wind blowing my car around. Anyways, back to the movie. Um, there's things I didn't like. The beginning was a little slow, I'll admit. And it was kind of, you know, like, just trying to get through the beginning it was a little, like, it was like, alright, just get to it, get to it, get to the plane crash, we know it's coming. Because they kept doing flashbacks to, like, uh, all his stuff, his childhood and stuff, and they're very brief. Um, and really, uh, like, there's not very much character development, no, development in those scenes at all, especially with his family, but, um... Those scenes are very brief. Uh, but, I mean, it's a very uh, big source material to try to cover, like, all that. It's really hard to do. Um, but the, there's, like, lines of dialogue in there, and you're, like, are really, like, corny. Like, in foreshadowing, like, like, what was that one, um, like, forgive thy enemy or whatever, like, it's, like, foreshadowing stuff, and, you know, like, like, he, like, he goes to church and says, forgive thy, the priest is saying, forgive thy enemy, and stuff like that, and he, of course, holds that, you know, dear to his heart, um, and then, what was the other one, there's, like, there's, like, a bunch of lies, or when his brother says before he leaves, like, uh, a moment of pain will be a lifetime of glory or something like that. And I'm like, all right, fucking foreshadowing it. And he's like, nobody talks like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, nobody fucking talks like that. Whatever. There's, like, lines of dialogue in there. Like, it's just obvious. <gasps> the fuck is going on? Oh, there's a bug flying around my fucking light. That's what the fuck that is. The fuck? <laughs> Anyways, um... <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, there's not much more I can talk about this movie. Go see it. It's really good. Um, if you know the source material, yeah, you'll like this movie. I, I, I want anybody who's um, seen the movie, sees the movie, uh, and no, has read the book, uh, like, tell me what was fabricated, what wasn't. I'm interested in hearing that. Um, I really am. Uh, it always is fascinating. Um, now, let's talk about the trailers for a second for this movie. I got one of the weirdest assortment of trailers I've ever gotten in last year, like, ever, in, in my, like, years of being at the movie theaters. This is one of the weirdest assortment of trailers I have ever had. I'm not joking. Listen to this one. First, I got Black Hat, the, the new trailer for that. Um, the new uh, cyber crime movie directed by Michael Mann where a guy's, like, cyber attacking, like, uh all around the world and like they need to hire Chris Hemsworth who's like a hacker professional hacker to help stop him stuff like that whatever it looks pretty like again I like Michael Mann it looks like a Mike, good Michael Mann movie like it's like I haven't seen Mike Michael Mann hasn't done anything in a fucking long time unfortunately this movie's getting dumped in January which is never a good sign but maybe it'll be good I don't know I got the new I got the new trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey um, yeah, what the fuck do I have to say about Fifty Shades of Grey other than it's fucking Fifty Shades of Grey? Uh, I, I kind of laugh that they, like, keep hiding in the trailers, like, the, uh, the Bondism and shit like that. They only hint at it very briefly. There's, like, a few seconds of snippets of that. Like, they, if you didn't know what the source material is, which I'm sure most people do... Like, you would probably, like, there are people would be misled into going into this movie thinking it's something else. But I'm sure most people that are seeing this movie know what the fuck they're getting into. Um, In the Heart of the Sea, which, that's a new trailer I got for that one, too. Um, which is, I thought at first, when I first saw the first trailer, that it was like Ron Howard doing a Moby Dick movie. No, I was wrong in that. It's... A true story that apparently happened that inspired the, the it was, it was the real story that inspired Moby the the novel no, Mo, uh, the novel Moby Dick, um, and wow, this is fucking I, 
listen to the selling this movie is doing, this trailer is doing for this movie. Listen to this shit. So, I'm not joking. This trailer is selling this movie as the greatest story ever told. Wow. That's bold. <laughs> Very bold. Way to go, movie. I'm... <laughs> Like, it's, it's like, I, I do compare it to, like, Evil Dead remake, saying it's the scariest movie ever made. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I know that that was the tagline for the original Evil Dead, I know that, but fucking, it's still stupid. Um, and then, um, oh, then when you, okay, so I got a trailer for Black Hat, I got a trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey, and I also got a trailer, uh, same trailer I've got for Taken 3. So I got those three trailers. What was the last trailer I fucking... I'm going to ask people, take a guess what the last trailer I got uh, before a movie started. Take a wild guess. I guarantee you won't fucking guess it. Because I, I would never fucking guessed. A movie called Do You Believe? Yeah. This is a movie being made by the guys who made God's Not Dead... And it's about as stereotypical Christian of a movie as it fucking gets. With stereotypical atheist characters, all that shit, and all that bullshit from the God's Not Dead movie. Um, and listen to the cast in this movie. This baffled me. Like, and again, like, it, like, what the fuck? Why is this trailer in front of, like, a couple, like, why is this trailer, like, right behind, like, fucking a trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey, which I just got a couple trailers ago. That's fucking weird. Like, what kind of demographic are we going for with these trailers, for fuck's sake? Um, I'm pretty certain the people who are going to see Fifty Shades of Grey are not going to go see Do You Believe. Um, that's really fucking weird. Um, I don't know what, what the fuck, and also, who the fuck, all right, listen to this. Just listen to this cast. Mira Servino. Where the fuck has she been for the past 20 years? I didn't know. I was like, the fuck? Mira Servino's in this movie? Um, Sean Astin. Again, you know, a guy who is famous for two things. Encino Man. I love Encino Man. Fuck off. Um, uh, even though I hate Polly Shore, I still like Encino Man. And, uh, Lord of the Rings. He, like, he did Lord of the Rings fucking did nothing else after that. Now he's in this. Uh, again, where the fuck have been... Where the fuck happened to Mary Servino? What the hell? Now she's in this fucking piece of shit? Um, oh, and then listen to this. Sybil Shepard. What the fuck? Like, why... And then my favorite, like, that maybe just my jaw fucking drop. Lee Majors! The fuck Lee Majors is in, this, in this movie? So they dig up Mary Servino, Sybil Shepard, and Lee fucking Majors. Like, fuck off. Like, why, why are all these talented people in this... Uh, Jesus. Literally, I'm like, why was this trailer in front of, like, Unbroken? And then I had to sit there and think in the back of my head, like, you do realize what day it is. I'm like, oh yeah, it's fucking Christmas Eve, never mind. That's why this was trailer was put in front of it. Ah, uh, but, but it's so weird to put that trailer, like, right next to fucking Fifty Shades of Grey and movies like Black Hat and Taken 3. That makes no sense. Like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm still trying to figure that fucking out. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um... That's the weirdest assortment of trailers I've ever gotten. Ever. Um, alright. I'm gonna get off here. Um, Merry Christmas to everybody. If I don't, my, uh, my next review don't come before tomorrow. But Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Um, anybody's watched my videos, thank you for watching for this long. Um, I got one more. I'm hoping to do a few more reviews. i definitely be doing a review in the next few days. Um, I bought uh, the interview on the interview on uh, YouTube. Uh, we're gonna get into that's gonna be a long review. I can tell you that right now. Um, talking about my feelings about 
all the shit. I, it, this, it's going to be a long review. I'm going to tell you, just forewarn you right now. Most of it's going to be me talking, ranting about fucking Sony pictures in Hollywood. Um, but anyways, yeah, I haven't, I, I literally paid for it. I just now got to finally watch it. Um, and I'm, when I finish watching it, I'll have a review up for the interview. One of the most talked about movies of like the year. Um, is it as I'm, I don't know if it's going to like the weird part about that movie is that of all this talk about this movie has been getting the, this movie has been getting, you know, people are forgetting this, like reviews have popped up for this movie before it got like, uh, banned. Um, and they weren't very good. So I'm, interested in what the fuck is ends up being so yeah there'll be a review for that in the next couple of days the interview maybe tomorrow i don't know it depends on what's going on tomorrow uh but again anyways have a merry christmas uh happy holidays hell whatever yeah i don't know if, it's it's fucking christmas so merry christmas um and i'll talk to you guys later